You're listening to international investment advisor Doug Goldstein on the Goldstein on Gelt Show, the financial show where we'll talk about how you can make the most of your money. With all the confusing financial chatter bombarding you each and every day, Goldstein on Gelt will give you the practical information you want and need about living a financially stable life. Here's your host, money maven Doug Goldstein. Okay, we are back. We are talking to Dr. Harold Vinegar, who retired in 2008 as the chief scientist of Royal Dutch Shell, and then he and his wife and his son made Aliyah. Now he's the chief scientist of Israel Energy Initiatives Limited in Jerusalem, which is developing Israel's unconventional oil reserves. Harold, it's a pleasure to have you. It's a pleasure to be here, Doug. Tell me, what are unconventional oil reserves? Well, conventional oil is... uh what everyone uh, imagines, you drill a, a well and uh, oil comes out of the well under its, the natural forces that are in, in the ground, and you, you, know, you basically have an oil and gas well. Um, but there's a whole other class of, of oil called unconventional oil, and what this means is that when you drill those wells, that the oil um, will require some special treatment in the subsurface in order to get it to move. So there are two classes of unconventional oils. One is the heavy oils and tar sands, such as uh, you find in Canada. And these are uh, extremely viscous uh, molasses-like oils that need uh, heating in the subsurface in order to get them to move. And the other class is the oil shales of the world. And uh, these have uh, the organic matter uh, uh, that makes up the, uh, the kerogen. Um, it's solid, and it requires heating to a uh, high enough temperature so that the solid basically becomes a, a liquid in the subsurface and then gets produced as a conventional oil um, once it's been heated. So those are the unconventional sources of oil. Here in Israel? Here in Israel. Uh, yes. Well, Israel has oil shale. It does, it does not have uh, much heavy oils, but uh, its oil shale resources are world-class, uh, one of the largest and best in the world. So why are we only finding out about this now? What's the, the history of oil in Israel? Well, the uh, oil shales uh, were basically uh, not developed in Israel for two reasons. The first is that uh, basically for as long as I can remember, the, uh, the real price of uh, oil was under $30 per barrel. Um, going way, way back in my career, it's always been roughly 20 to $25 per barrel in inflation-adjusted terms. And that's just not high enough uh, for the, uh, the capital costs required to produce unconventionals. Um, you need something of the order of $30 per barrel. And starting around 2003, the price of oil on, on the marketplace uh, started rising. And um, it's been going up uh, continuously since then and probably will continue to go up. Um, right now, we see uh, Brent crude at about $120 per barrel. And so the, uh, the time has, has come that unconventionals uh, are actually uh, economic to develop. And uh, this plays in Israel's favor because it has enormous quantities of this uh, oil shale. So when you say enormous, what, is, what, what are the spec, specs of that? Um, well... We have uh, mapped, uh, our company has mapped over 250 billion barrels of recoverable oil in Israel. So put that in, and that's a conservative estimate. Um, put that in perspective. Saudi Arabia has about 250 billion barrels of uh, uh, conventional oil reserves in the ground. So, so it's cheaper for them to get it out of the ground, but you're saying at the price that oil is today, it actually would pay for Israel to start uh, engaging their shale exactly, reserves? Exactly. In fact, what has happened is with time, conventional oil has gotten more expensive and unconventional oil has gotten less expensive. And why is that? 
it's because con there's a, a small amount of conventional oil left in the world, and so it's driven, its price is driven by scarcity. And as it becomes scarcer, the price goes up. Whereas unconventionals have enormous reserves. They swamp the amount of conventionals, orders of magnitude more. But they are driven, their cost is driven by technology. And as technology improves, the unconventionals get cheaper. And starting a few years ago, the, uh, the, they've crossed over. The two uh, supply curves have crossed so that marginally the, uh, the conventional oil that uh, companies are going after in the Arctic, in the deep uh, offshore, those are actually more expensive than development of the unconventional, say the tar sands in Canada and the oil shales, say here in Israel. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a flip. Oh, <laughs> things have changed. We are talking with Dr. Harold Vinegar, who was born in Brooklyn. Eventually, uh, recently, he made Aliyah after a 32-year career at Shell, where he specialized in unconventional oil resources like oil shale. One of the big complaints that people have about oil shale is that the technology, from what I understand, is to get it out of the ground, you have to heat it up very hot in the ground, and that can have some bad environmental effects. Is this true, or are there ways of dealing with that? It, it's true that the uh, oil shale has to be heated in the subsurface in order to con convert it to oil and gas. Um, and one has to be careful in terms of uh, the technology that's deployed and the local geology to be sure that there are not any uh, uh, negative environmental effects. Uh, Israel is blessed by having a, a geological and hydrogeological uh, situation where the uh, the aquifers are far, far below the oil shale and separated from it by uh, 200 meters of impermeable rock so that uh, there will not be uh, any environmental issues associated with the Israeli oil shale. That's, uh, that's different than some of the other oil shales in the world where uh, the aquifer actually flows through the oil shale. And then, then you have to be very careful about uh, what technology is used to develop it. But Israel's in, uh, in a very good uh, situation that, that way. Enormous reserves, very high quality oil, um, and uh, very, very uh, safe environmental issues. So it sounds a little bit like a no-brainer. So why is this not being actively pursued? Well, we're starting uh, up our program here. Uh, the first thing that has to be done, of course, is to appraise the resource. Is it really there? You have to convince yourself that uh, um, it's as large and, um, and uh, qu of high quality as I, I've indicated. So our company has uh, been doing an appraisal program. We've drilled six appraisal wells in the Shvila Basin, taken thousands of feet of core, and it really is a world-class resource. In the laboratory, we've heated the oil shell up and we've produced the oil from it. It's very light. It's rosé. Uh, it almost looks like a rosé wine. And um, the uh, thickness of the resource is... Uh, like 300 meters thick. It's enormous, enormously rich and has a very small surface footprint, which is the characteristic of oil shale in general. It's the densest uh, fossil fuel resource in the world so that projects that are done in oil shale don't have a very large surface footprint compared to conventional oil. Okay, so again, just to re rephrase my questions, are we seeing companies like Royal Dutch Shell come in with you know, tens of billions of dollars of investment to, to get this well, oil out of the ground? You're not seeing Royal Dutch Shell come in into Israel, but they are in uh, the sister deposit in Jordan. Um, during the Cretaceous period, about 70 million years ago, Israel and Jordan both um, were... Uh, under under the sea, and they both had uh, simultaneous deposition of the oil shale, so they both have uh, equivalent and sister deposit characteristics. And uh, Royal Dutch has been uh, 
drilling in Jordan uh, for the last few years. They've drilled hundreds of wells. And Jordan also has uh, extremely rich oil shale. So um, what you're not going to see, I think, in Israel is uh, any of the uh, major integrated oil companies come into Israel. Um, when, you, when you do a lot of business in the Arab world, it's just uh, not advisable for these countries, uh, these companies, to enter the Israeli market. But um, the smaller independent oil companies um, that aren't doing business there are definitely interested, and we've had uh, a lot of interest in our company. We're traded on the uh, the New York Stock Exchange under the uh, ticker symbol Genie, G N E, <laughs> and. Uh, you know, our particular company is valued at $250 million. So what exactly does your, your company does the research? We, we are a uh, R&D and exploration company uh, focused on oil shale and other unconventionals, both in Israel and other countries of the world. Um, it's the only uh, pure play that I know of in the, uh, in the oil shale domain. A lot of uh, major oil companies have very small uh, groups in the com in in the big companies that work on oil shale, but we are the only uh, company that is focused entirely on oil shales. We have um, a lot of intellectual property here. Um, we're doing research on improving the uh, the technology for developing the oil shales, and we're we're searching for oil shales that meet the characteristics where the technology will be effective and uh, economical. Okay, it sounds fascinating. It's also very exciting to hear that Israel, in fact, does have a natural resource. We've been talking to Dr. Harold Vinegar, who was formerly the chief scientist of Royal Dutch Shell and is now the chief scientist of Israel Energy Initiatives, uh, based here in Jerusalem. Uh, Harold, the last few seconds, could you just tell people how can they follow your work or follow what's going on in the Israel shale oil area? Well, um, our company has a website, uh, http colon double backslash iei hyphen energy dot com. And so you can uh, read about our developments here. I, I think the takeaway message, though, that I would like to give to your audience is that Israel has an extremely bright energy future. The, uh, the growth of the uh, natural gas discoveries in the Mediterranean, as well as the enormous oil shale deposits on shore, means that Israel is going to be a major oil and gas uh, exporting country in the future. And, okay. and so things are really exciting here. Indeed, indeed. Dr. Harold Vinegar, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.